government quickly. We need to avert an accident that won't be an accident. History is not going to take it down as an accident. History will take it down as a failure of the political class of the European Union, of me, of Dr. Schäuble, of Mrs. Merkel, of Alexis Tsipras, of Mr. Juncker, of the whole political class. We have a historic duty not to allow this to happen. And what do we need to do? What do we need to do to have an agreement? The press impresses people with tales of complexity. It's very complex. It's not. We can do it in one night. Our leaders can lock themselves, as they usually do in Europe, into a room for a, at 8 o'clock in the evening and emerge at 4 in the morning with an agreement. It will be hard, but they can do it. Take, for instance, the case of labor markets. In Greece, for two years now, we have no protection of labor. No collective bargaining. It was all taken away. The result, ladies and gentlemen, is that more than one-third of paid labor is undeclared labor. The labor market in Greece is as unregulated as it can be. 500,000 Greeks haven't been paid for the last six months. They keep working, hoping that one day they will be paid. This is worse than slavery. Under slavery, at least workers, or slaves, were guaranteed shelter and food. In Greece, this is a luxury for many workers. So what have we suggested to the institutions? We don't want to go back to the old-fashioned labor laws of the 1980s and 90s. What we recommended was that we go to the International Labor Organization and we design modern labor market rules modern collective bargaining rules or legislation with them. Maybe we can borrow from the German model or the French model. We are not asking for anything that the rest of Europe doesn't have. But no, this was described recently, very recently, as backtracking by the Greek government, wanting to reintroduce sensible ways of regulating labor markets so that we don't have the broken down labor markets that we have. Of course this pension system is not sustainable. We want to reform it. What is the reform proposal that's coming from the institutions that we should cut pensions? They've already been cut by 40%. 40%. Is cutting further a reform? I don't think it's a reform. I mean, any butcher can take a cleaver and start chopping things down. We need surgery. We need to find ways of eliminating early retirements, of merging pension funds, of reducing their operating costs, of moving from an unsustainable to a sustainable system rationally and gradually. Let me give you one more example, VAT. We're being told that the reform that we should effect as of today is to push electricity from 13% VAT to 23%. 10% in a country which is afflicted by energy poverty. We're being told that the 6% VAT rate for drugs should go up to 12%. Imagine if I were to go to my parliament and recommend that the way out of this crisis is by having low pension pensioners who are receiving something like 300, 350 euros a month. That the Institutions are recommending that we lob 120 of that 350, reducing by 120 euros a 350 euro pension, while at the same time pushing the drugs that these pensioners are paying for from 6% to 12%. Do you think that my country is going to become reformable? Do you think that I can infuse the Greek people to do that which they have not done in the last five years, and that, that is to embrace our reform agenda? I don't think so. Once we, we won, you could see that that threat became institutionalized. The European Central Bank reduced the extent to which the, our government, during the negotiations, could issue T bills. Effectively, the cap of 15 billion was reduced to 9 billion. And there were all these threats, or leaks through, through Reuters and Bloomberg, that the European Central Bank was beginning to introduce capital controls and all.
This is all adding to the psychology that you described, Gustav. In the summer of 2012, the euro was saved by the president of the European Central Bank simply by one sentence when he said, I will do whatever it takes to save the euro. Nobody said, we will do whatever it takes to keep Greece in the euro. If that was said, no bank run. The Greeks don't want to take their money out of the bank. They're just normal people, people who are responding to a culture and strategy of fear. And this, to me, is a bit uh, not only worrying, but puzzling, because Mario Draghi, in November, very succinctly and correctly said that for the euro to succeed anywhere, it must succeed everywhere. Well, surely, surely everywhere includes Greece. One of the saddest moments since I became minister when I was, it was when I was told in a Eurogroup meeting that the fact that we were freshly elected and we have a fresh mandate doesn't mean much because democracy cannot change anything when you have contracts, loan agreements. Let me submit it to you that if that were true, perhaps it would have been more honest to suspend elections for countries that are indebted. Is this the kind of European Union we want? Θέλει κρόκο στο ριζότο, αλλά και κρασάκι πρώτο. Για να βρίσκει πάντα αυτό που θε, έλα σε ένα από τα εννέα καταστήματα ηλεκτρονέτ τη Δυτική Μακεδονία ή σε ένα από τα 79 σε όλη την Ελλάδα. Ηλεκτρονέτ. Σχέση εμπιστοσύνη.